What's going on, everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. I hope you're having a great day today. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install and run Android operating system on your iPhone or iPad using the UTM SE emulator. For this, you don't need a PC or no need to jailbreak or others. And right now, so this is my iPad Air M3 2025 model, which you already know about. It's powerful, has eight gigs of RAM, and is running on the latest iOS 26.1 build version. So anyway, to get started, simply open the App Store and search for UTM SE emulator and install the emulator. All right, so currently they have updated it to the latest QMU 10 build, updated the backend upstream of QMU, fixed some bugs, and improved the performance. This emulator also adopts the current liquid glass design and also works on the latest iOS 26 version. They added new support for automation with shortcuts, improved keyboard shortcut keys, and improved some configurations with some VMs. And these are the main changes. So now let's open UTM SE emulator. And here you can also see the updated log, like what they have changed in this update and all the previous logs. Now let's continue. And almost everything still looks the same here. And also, if you want a proper guide for the detailed process, you can check out their UTM gallery as well. You can install and run any type of operating system you want, like Linux-based ones, Debian, Kali, Ubuntu, and there are a lot of others. You can also try the Windows versions, even the latest Windows 11. Based on the requirements during setup, you can follow up this guide. Well, I'll soon also do a separate video on Windows 11 as well. Anyways, let's get into the main part. And here we actually need one more thing. You need the Android x86 disk image ISO file. I'll leave the links down below in the description. So choose and get this Android x86-9 version. Now let's create a new virtual machine. Select New Machine. Here select OS as Other. Here we need to configure the hardware. Enable Expert Mode, which will make the setup process much easier. Here architecture is selected to x86-64 based. System is selected to standard PC version. Set RAM memory to 1 to 1.5 gigs or 2 gigs. If you are using low RAM, then choose 1 gig. Set CPU cores to 4 to 6 cores, which is more than enough. And here we have the legacy hardware option. That's for older system builds, especially for old Windows versions, which you don't need for this. Let's continue. Here the CD DVD image option is selected. Now we need to select the Android x86 image build, which I showed you in the beginning. And this is based on Android 9. I even tried the 64-bit versions like the 11R build, but it got stuck and crashed during the boot. So try to use the x86 version. Here enable UEFI boot. Let's continue. Here set the storage space to at least 8 gigs. Now continue. You can also enable the shared directory path if you want to set a custom file path to the Android storage as a drive. And that's it. Here's the summary. So save the machine. All right, so here the VM got created. Now let's go to this machine settings. Go to information. Here set the machine name as Android. You can also set the machine OS icon. All right, let's go to system. Here make sure to enable force multi-core. In CPU options, you can choose different CPUs or you can leave it to default. That's it. Now go to QEMU settings. Here leave everything to default. In input settings, set USB support to USB 3. Now go to display settings. The display card is selected to Vertio VGA by default. Here set up scaling value to linear. There's also a retina option here. Well, I'll leave all to default. And that's it. So these are the settings. Now save settings. And now we have completely created the Android VM. Now let's boot the system. All right, it's loaded. Wait a second. Here, I'll connect my Bluetooth keyboard. Okay, all right, now here we have some options. You can boot Android on live. We have debug mode, Android installation, and advanced options. Here, choose the Android x86 installation. All right, now here we need to create a partition to install Android. So here, select create modify partition. Here, do you want to use GPT? Select no. And now here is our assigned disk partition, which is of eight gigs. Now here, we need to create a new partition as primary partition. Here, set the size to at least four gigs. 
set it to beginning. All right, the partition got created. And with this, you can also set the type of partition like FAT32 or EXT4 file system for Android. I'll show this in the next steps. Now here, select the primary partition. Choose the write option. Here we need to write the partition table to disk. So type yes and press enter. Now make this partition flag as bootable. That's it. Also, create and write the partition table to another partition for user storage data. Now quit. All right, so here it shows our assigned bootable partition SDA1. Select and press enter. Now here select the file system format to FAT32 and press enter. Now format the SDA1 partition to FAT32. Here skip the EFI Grub2. Here again, select no. The installation process starts. Here it writes the Android x86 image to the assigned disk SDA. All right, now here the installer is going to create a disk image for data. Select yes. Input the image size value to at least two gigs or above based on the assigned value. Now press enter and okay. And finally, the Android x86 is successfully installed. Now let's run the Android x86 system. And also, I want to mention, you already know about it, you can manage emulation by these toggles. There's a power toggle. You can pause and play the process, display modes, and the disk option where you can eject or add the disk image, just like we do on Oracle VMs if you know about it. So I'll fast forward this process because the booting might take a lot of time because this is not enabled with JIT compilation so things might work slow or even crash. So let's see. And there we go, finally, it's booting. So I'll fast forward this process. All right, we got a welcome screen. I'll complete this setup, but it's too slow, guys. There's a lot of delay in the cursor, a lot of input lag here, and very slow response. And finally, we are on the home screen. And also, please don't expect more performance from this like the regular ones. It's not even usable, to be honest. And this is based on Android 9, which is a pretty seven-year-old version based on x86 build. But still, it even works so slow as expected. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. As you saw, it does boot and works, but the performance is extremely slow and not really usable. So don't expect anything smooth out of this. But still, it's fun to try and experiment with UTMSE on iPhone or iPad. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like, share it, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.